Hey folks, welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy X-2 on the series JG. I couldn't help myself. Like, the one aspect of this game, other than the Creature Creator, which is part of the International Edition only, that I'd never really played with extensively was Blitzball. So, I actually did some off-screening of Blitzball, and I figured I'd better come back and, um... And jump in and start recording this because I was in the middle of off screening. I'm right in the middle of a game. I've won a couple of games by a mercy rule at this point because, well, I should give the guy credit. Um, although now, hold on, I switch my input to actually go see it. But yeah, it's a fact. A fact. Uh, I read a fact which really helps, and it goes into a lot of goofy detail. And there's a section of the game where the guy is writing the fact in character as Waka, which is very, <laughs> it's very silly. Um, but, um, still, it was immensely useful, so I want to give credit to the guy who did it, and it's, uh, Jack Power. There's the right way, there's the wrong way, and there's the Jack Power way, but anyway, the big thing he, uh, he actually, I'm assuming Jack Power is not short for Jacqueline Power, the big thing he taught me was... And the mechanic that, you know, other than the fact that you can't directly control the games anymore, which robs you of a lot of the fun, the big thing that really made Blitzball frustrating was that stats are linked so that when one goes up, another slides down. And it seems like it's really difficult to actually improve your players meaningfully to have a lot of control. And, well, and somebody in the comments pointed out that little blue number next to a stat in the training screen is the maximum amount you, of points you can put into it in that training session without increasing fatigue. But it means more than that. It's actually that that is how much you can put into it without increasing fatigue and how much it can go up. But that also represents how much a stat will go down if you train if you do the training that decreases it. So for example, shooting is um, always linked to receiving. Some things like you train in um, if you train attack, your goalkeeping ability goes down. But if you train your goalkeeping, your passing ability goes down. So they're not like a one-for-one. One. They're kind of a triangle. But but the simplest one is that shooting is always linked to your ability to receive passes. So if your shooting is seven and your receiving is, is two, then when you train shooting, your shooting will go up seven, like, you know, sub points, mini points. They're not visible. But your, your receiving only goes down two. So you have to find circumstances where the thing that is going to take a hit is only going to take a small hit, whereas the thing that will get a boost will get a big boost. What that means is that you have to pay really close attention every time, although they don't change that often. So, like, what I've discovered, because I was going nuts, it was eating up so much time setting up each training session that I finally just got to the point where I was like, okay... Uh, shooting is 7, and uh, receiving is only 2, so I want to train shooting, so I'm going to train shooting at 5. Uh, and that way I'm not getting the max every single time, but if that shooting number goes up to 8 or down to 6, if I stay at 5, I'm not going to push fatigue. And I get to slam the button and go through tons of training points each time, and 9 times out of 10, what I'll do is beneficial to the characters and won't, uh, won't lead to problems. Or fatigue. So that's what I did in order to actually really move people's stats around rapidly. And now, uh, other than the fact that Riku, to my surprise, is the one who's on the bench because I can't find... She's the one where I can't find a place where she's better than the people that I can recruit at this level. Brother and Buddy, I figured one of them would be benched. But Brother and Buddy are still in the midfield. Riku's kind of on the bench. She has uh, absolutely horrible... Um, one of her stats is god awful. I can't remember which one it is. It's either blocking or endurance is at zero. Because it's rare that you get a chance to increase it, and it always decreases things that are important for her. But Riku's benched. Meanwhile, Yuna has become a very good all arounder, although she has a terrible um, blocking stat. I, one of her stats is awful, but her shooting's really high. And Pain, um, she can't block passes. She can't do anything related to defense, but her shooting skill is now like really high. Uh, and her passing skill is not that great. The, it, the problem is, I wish you could do AI by character instead of by team, because I would just set Payne's AI. Sh if you get the ball, shoot the ball every single time. It's never going to be a bad idea for Sh Payne to shoot the ball at this point, because, like, if I it, really, if I could control her AI, she would never, she would never pull back on defense, no matter how much pressure was being put in our goal. She would always hang around on the uh, other team's side of the field and just be ready to shoot. But you can't control it to that extent. 
Anyway, uh, we are now in the semifinals of a league tournament, which is why I decided I would spontaneously start recording. If you recall from Final Fantasy X, because of the weird number of teams, uh, there's always a team, because it was, what was it, the... Uh, now, the Aurochs are out. They've been replaced by the Gullwings. But in the original days, it was the Aurochs, the Kilika Beasts, the Luka Goers, the um, Guado Glories, the Albed Sykes, and the Ronso Fangs. For some reason, the biggest, most populous city on uh, Spira, uh, Bavel, doesn't get a team. Probably because you never visit it in its capacity as, like, a city. So you got six teams, which means that you get two teams who get a bye into the second round of every tournament. It's weird. So this time we actually played in the first round of the tournament. That's actually good because it gives you a better opportunity to have a player on your team be the top scorer, which also gives you a prize. But uh, we beat the Ronso Fangs in the first round. Uh, now we're playing the Guado Glories. The Ronso Fangs are actually tougher than the Guado Glories, so I pretty much know we're going to win this. And as you can see, we're up for nothing, so there's a chance we'll even get the Mercy Rule, because you, you get seven goals, the game ends, and I've won a few by Mercy Rule against the Fangs and occasionally the Glories. Uh, but the thing is, the second prize for this tournament is play the Besaid Aurochs, and that's why I suddenly wanted to start recording, even though I was enjoying a little, like, you know, hanging around in sweats, doing an off-screening, as though I dress up when I'm recording. Um, yeah, so after we win this, uh, if we win the tournament, I'll almost be disappointed because it means we won't unlock the Aurochs. Uh, but I'm pretty sure we won't win the, t the tournament because in the finals we'll either be facing the Albed Sykes and Luka Goers, neither of which I've actually beaten yet in off-screening. And uh, this is without me using uh, Adrenaline at all. We might use Adrenaline a little bit in the finals, but again, I'm not sure I actually want to win the tournament. I think we want to get second so that we can unlock the Aurochs as a permanent part of the Blitzball minigame another team to play against. It just seems like a fun thing to, to unlock. And in this one, third place won some weird prize, uh, a, a new training regimen. So Blappa, unfortunately for us, uh, scored two points because we really wanted to see the other teams spread their points around across multiple players. But uh, we got Payne, who I would think would be my top scorer. I've recruited Rin. I had Nadala for a while. Uh, and she got fired. She was like a level 3. I can now recruit level 4 people. So we got Brother. Mildly surprising he scored. Uh, it's surprising to me that Payne is scoring so infrequently, but Rin will probably be the lead scorer in this entire tournament. So now in the finals, we will be facing the Albed Sykes and most likely losing. And the Fangs will be facing the Glories in the, third, in the bronze medal game, which will almost certainly go to the Fangs. But right now, it looks like we we're in a good position to get the scoring leader in this little tournament. Uh, and as you can see, we got 40 wins. So I've off-screen, uh, through the magic of like slamming through training regimens very quickly and then playing games uh, sped up, not watching them. Um, yeah. Oh, you know what? I should actually go save just in case we fuck this up somehow. Like, I might want to just save to see what happens if you... Because if we win, honestly, I might want to load and see if we can intentionally lose the final match. But I don't think we will. So we'll save real quick here. And, um... Not that it really matters. I don't think anybody's checking, but uh, part of me wishes I could get rid of the date and timestamps on these saves. The uh, timestamps are actually inaccurate. Uh, I'm not sure what it is with my PS4, but it's its clock is off. But the day is more or less accurate. So, and for some bizarre reason, it bothers me that somebody like somebody could be like 50 videos into my LP and suddenly be like, "What? He recorded this back in April? Why? That was three months ago. I'm not watching this." Not that you can't tell when the videos are made public, but all right. So now. Uh... So let's talk about that training regimen a little bit. Again, I already explained a lot of this. Oh, and the, the, orn the green numbers are people's trust with each other, because I spent some time playing around with the training regimen that is uh, teamwork. But then I read the fact, and it's like the guy's saying, eh, in theory, this increases the odds of something happening like a volley shot, but that he doesn't really know that it works, and he pretty much only puts points in there if there's nothing else to do. 
And it's so far, following this guy's advice has been pretty good. As you can see, Payne now has a shooting score of 52. Her block is zero, which means she has no ability whatsoever to interfere with the pass. Um, and it's tough to raise. Like, some people just have basement stats. It's very difficult to raise. Um, her morale isn't the crapper, though. I'm not sure what that is. She's just tired. Let's raise her morale. Actually, let's raise everybody's morale. I don't know why anybody's morale would be so low right now, but... Um, And I don't really know what morale does. Buddy's morale is already pretty high. Shinra's morale is pretty high. Maybe we'll go back to... Yeah, you're at 50. We'll, we'll keep it there. We'll give you... Well, he actually has an opportunity to learn catch. And a lot of the time, goalkeeping. And a lot of the time... Um, you have to wait for opportunities for a catch. The blue number next to catch should be anything other than zero. So Shindra's stats overall are horrible, but um, the only one that matters for him are passing, which is currently very low because it's the one that gets lowered when you raise catch. So like when I'm not working on his catch stat, I'm working on getting his pass stat. But I, I think that might be... I don't really know the difference between the pass stat and the range stat. They broke it out into two things. It might be uh, that pass is... is uh, bounced up against the defending player's block to determine whether a pass gets by the defender, and range just determines how far it goes before it's automatically fumbled. In which case, range is more important for Shinra, because he should never be... Uh, he should never have somebody blocking his passes. If he grabs the ball, I believe he gets a free pass out. So range would be good for him, if, that, if it works the way I think it does, but I'm not sure. Now, Riku's morale is also kind of a shitter. Probably because she's been benched. I make uh, I make some jokes about how much I hate Riku. I don't. There's really no character in the game that I really, really hate. Um, but yeah, poor Riku said my bench. Hey, Payne's morale is uh, 99 now. Yuna's morale is 99. Brother's morale is 99. You get a car. You get a car. Okay, so I gotta use their points a little bit more constructively now. This seems like it would be a good time to work on Pain's Endurance, or maybe Attack. Her pass is not as, it's not horrible, 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 but it's pretty bad. I would love for her to get better at blocking, actually. Uh, oh, you know what? No, Receiving is what we need to work on, because this is one of the rare opportunities to increase it without worrying about her shot uh, getting degraded. Now, Yuna's got high shot and high receiving, so it's not a good time to work on either. Uh, what is her stat that I wish was good and isn't? Blocking. Yeah, neither Payne nor Yuna are good at blocking passes, which is unfortunate because I've moved them up to the front, and it would be nice if they were able to try to interfere with, you know, when the defense gets the ball from them and is trying to get it out of the field, they could, like, catch it and get another shot. It's, it's almost like rebounding. Kind of conceptually. Never mind, that doesn't make sense. Um... I could work on her passing, but honestly, if for a while I had Yuna in the midfield. Now that she's where she is, I don't want her passing the ball. I want her shooting. Uh, what do you What do you lose when you increase endurance blocking, which is already in the crapper? So let's uh, just work on her endurance. This means that if somebody tries to tackle her, she should be able to uh, shake the tackle and uh, still get a shot on goal. Brother needs to be a good all-arounder where he is. Um... I'd been working on his shooting, actually, because he's actually scored goals. Sometimes he, you know, they press. They don't stay in their positions. They press on goal when they have the ball, so. Other than the goalie and maybe your backfielders, um, there's nobody where it's not a good idea for them to have some ability to shoot the ball. I mean, you never know when you're just randomly going to get a shot on goal, and, and um, you know, that's just a good thing when you do. Um, Buddy has good blocking and good passing. Uh, I wish his attack was better. So let's attack is easy to uh, upgrade for anybody except the goalie, who doesn't need it because attack, which is your ability to get the ball from other players, is always linked to catch, which is totally unneeded for any position except goalie. It doesn't affect uh, interfering with passes. It only affects. Yeah. 
I've been meaning to get her endurance better. This would be a chance to do it. Although, honestly, it's so low now, it's almost like, is there any way to get her endurance to a point where it's acceptable? Or is it too late into this Blitzball game? So at this point, I just kind of rush through and check for anybody whose fatigue number increased. And if so, I need to go back and check what I did with them. Apparently... Well, your stats have changed, so I can no longer increase uh, your endurance. Or I might have done that backwards, actually. Yeah, but you just check and see if fatigue went up, and if it didn't, I just keep doing the same thing. Somebody's fatigue went up slightly. Shinra. Because his catch has settled back down to zero. So, I guess we'll work on uh, his passing again. Try to get it back up from being at zero, which is where it keeps going every time I get into the point where he can uh, practice goaltending. Now, something happened with Payne. She was working on receiving, but her receiving's dropped down to zero. Um, endurance is block. Okay, we'll, we'll work on endurance for a while. Somebody went up again. Damn, this is actually happening more often than it usually does. Buddy can't keep working on what he's working on. Uh, or if he does, it has to... Sick? But he's at eight. I'm a little surprised that Buddy's having the difficulties having. Maybe this is a good time to work on his shooting. Because his shooting's actually... No, never mind. I was misreading... Uh, this reading. Yeah, it's six points allocated out of eight. I don't know why his fatigue would have gone up. I think it's if you don't do this and you go and min-max every time, you'll go mad. It's just such slow progress. Somebody got injured. That's the risk of this. Who got injured? Riku. Well, who the fuck cares? She's on the bench. I, not to sound callous, but but that basically means that Riku will. I could spend some points to get her back to being able to train, but I think I'm just gonna go play and let this game that she misses be it. So as you can see, third place gets Killika Stairway Workout, which I'm curious what that is, but we're not gonna get it because we're in the championship game now. So we'll either get a Star Bracer. Or we'll get to play the Besaid Aurochs, and I think I'd honestly rather play the Besaid Aurochs. Let's go cancel again. And save again. I have a whole video of this nonsense. I wasn't really intending for that to happen. There's one big surprise unlock you get after unlocking the Aurochs, and I'm not even clear on whether you can do it on your first playthrough. And uh, I found out, I knew what it was, and I found out there's a possibility you can't do it on your first playthrough. That, that possibility kind of came to my attention after I'd already put a little time into this. So if it turns out you don't retain your Blitzball progress in play, second playthroughs, I will be irritated. <laughs> So we'll just go ahead and play the tournament and um, championship match Albert Sykes versus Goings. And we won't use Adrenaline because that's cheating. It's not cheating, it's just that it, it has a chance of injuring your players. Normally in a tournament or season game, yeah, your whole thing is use Adrenaline. If your guys get injured or fatigued, you use your training. Like, you can play a bunch of exhibition matches against shitty teams to gain points to train and improve your stats, and then you can play tournament and season games and use your training points to recover from the fatigue you get from using adrenaline to actually win those games. That's kind of how it seems to work. Let's go ahead and do... This is an important game for us. Let's do uh, the full visual styling. Why, why the hell not? It's not often that we'll be doing this, so let's watch an actual game here. Let's let's root for the uh, Albed Sykes as we hope to see the Gold Wings get second place and thus... Um, Oh, nice interception by Buddy, but he's going to get attacked, and I think he's going to lose the ball. Yep. Brother and Buddy with the double team effort. Except that Brother didn't do... Wow. Blappa's... He's their leading scorer, I think. I'm already regretting the fact that I decided to watch this in real time instead of the sped-up version. Like, we're 30 seconds in, I'm already like, 
second guessing that. So Miyu and um, some other Albed dude and Rin are our. Um... Why are you passing to him? Pass it downfield. Pass to Yuna or to Pain, even better. Anyway, the Albed Sykes, I believe, for everything I've heard, and certainly my recollection from the uh, Blitzball minigame in the previous game, they're pretty much the best team. Although I think the Aurochs are going to be better when they unlock. Because even though that doesn't make sense with what we know of them from the previous game, they, uh, in this game you have to unlock them, so it makes sense that they'd be tough from a gameplay perspective. Shirtless buddy. You know, Riku's got to be, um... <laughs> Riku can't have a crush on Shinra. She can't have a crush on brother. So, or brother. so I'm assuming that when the shirtless buddy's around, that's the one time Riku's allowed to just kind of be a little hot under the collar. Come on, Yuna, shoot the ball. You're you're not going to get too much closer than this without somebody challenging. Or pass to pain. Pass to pain. Does she need... Oh, god damn it. I would have made her shoot the ball so much earlier. Or I would have made her pull some defenders off of pain and then pass to pain. Pass to pain. But no, this is why I shouldn't be watching. Part of the reason I shouldn't be watching is it's boring. Another part of the reason I shouldn't be watching is I keep thinking what I would have done were this FFX blitz ball, and I actually had some control over my player's actions. And I've got this instinctive need to want to... Uh, kick up the adrenaline so that we can actually hopefully try to win, but no oh, good job, Shinra. But yeah, that's right, we actually kind of want to lose here so that we can uh, unlock the Aurochs, and just in case there's a cinematic of some kind, I didn't want to uh, unlock the Aurochs um, off screen, just in case it actually triggered a little, you know, Cinema of Waka declaring that the Aurochs are back, brother. You about to get fucked, ya. Yeah. <laughs> double teamed. Wow. Uh, I wonder how Lockham felt about being double teamed by brother and buddy. You know, I heard they did, did a lot of that kind of thing back in college. Sorry. Pass to Yuna, or... Yeah, your, your shot score is terrible. So pressure play. They're using adrenaline and stuff. That's what pressure play means. And you gotta pressure play your 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 stat that you use doubles. Callahan. It was Callahan. He is actually he's an Albed, but he's not a one of the psychs. He's on our side. Pain why is Pain swimming towards him? Pain needs to swim towards their goalie and be prepared to shoot. And now you're passing right into the middle of their defense. I do not understand. And you are passing further into your own backcourt to a guy who has defenders on him. I mean, I, I picked short pass as my... Okay, yeah, see, now Payne is in a good position. But nobody is passing it to her. And I'm getting way too involved in this. Thing is, in real life, I don't actually watch or care about sports. Which, apparently, like, all of my interests... Yeah, it's pass to... Pass to Payne, goddammit. And now Yuna, unfortunately, has no capacity to steal this ball from him, or attack that isn't high enough. But yeah, I guess all of my potential interest in real-life sports is being absorbed by this game of Blitzball, since I don't watch sports in the real life. I used to. I mean, in high school, I followed pro sports a little bit. You know, just conversation with other kids in the class or whatever, but you know, it's been a long time since I really followed or cared about any of them. <laughs> I swear the Sykes AI is smarter than my AI, and it's not really that smart either. Overtime, sudden death. Now it's like I want to... Yeah, this corkscrew shot could do it. They haven't really got many shots on goal, actually. I haven't gotten any. Good job, Shinna. I'm not even being sarcastic. I was like, please let that one go so we can just finish this. Consolation match, we certainly don't care about. 
the Fangs should win this one. Uh, probably not like a blowout, but... Oh man, they're in Guados are getting injured. The Ronzo Fangs, whatever they say about Kamari wanting peace, the Ronzo Fangs go out there and just butcher the Guado glories. They're like, oh, you try to wipe out our race? Well, we're gonna kick your ass, bitch! So we will get top score and second prize in the overall tournament. Yuna alphabetically comes after Blapa, but she's considered the second place instead of third place because she saved the entire world before becoming a blitzball player. Going to finish tournament number two, please accept this prize. You earned the chance to play the Visedor Ox. Rin is the top scorer. You earned a recovery bracer. Okay, so no cinematic, so I didn't really need to worry about that, I suppose. Now, uh, I guess, well, well, you know what, my last video went long, I could certainly end it here. Um, I probably should. But I want to just play a quick game against the Bastade Aurochs and just see how, how bad they spank us. I'm thinking of possibly even playing a game against the Aurochs where we uh, have our adrenaline meter on max the whole time and see what happens. I've got a couple of reserve players. So if somebody gets injured, I, I think I can call timeout and put in a reserve player, but I'm not sure it works that way. Well, we've got a bunch of training points to spend, but I don't really feel like doing that, so... Let's play an exhibition match against the Besaid Orox. So there is no timeout. We'll go ahead and do visual mode for this. We'll have another. Yeah, so this this will automatic. No, let's go default. That means that it it switches into uh, zoom in mode when specific things happen, like a shot. So bada. Oh, what? See, the Orox are doing like trick passes and shit. Brother can't touch bada. Luckily, Jossie was like the worst player on this fucking team. Yuna passes to Pain, which I almost was upset. Yeah, I am upset about it. Because she should have just shot. Even though I'm always saying they need to pass to, um... Oh, Volusia. That's right, they, the Aurochs will have extra players they didn't have before, because they won't have enough players otherwise. Pain, shoot the ball. Oh, she got like the entire team challenging her. Damn, she almost got out of that. So they got these goofy ass trick passes. Rin is now injured, so this is why you don't do uh, full on uh, adrenaline mode for the whole freaking game. Pain is injured. <laughs> The Aurochs are not only going to beat us, they're going to leave us land. <laughs> she tries to set up a volley. I guess that's what we get for having additional trust between Yuna and Brother. We haven't even seen, uh, because the ball has always been in our in their court. We haven't even seen Waka or Beklum yet, because they're... And they actually are... I don't know what's going on with that, why we haven't seen them. I was about to say, let's see Chatsu leave Yuna land. <laughs> Chatsu lays Yuna the fuck out. Like, hey Yuna, we know, we know you since you were a little girl and we, we are all grateful you say Sphira, but I, I need to lay you the fuck out. I'm gonna take a steel chair to you. I don't even understand the one-two pass and what it's for, but... Why in the world would Waka be executing a 1-2 pass with Letty? Letty is the center. Blitzball's different. There's a different number of players now, but in the old days, Letty was the guy who had to set up scoring opportunities. Yuna, evade the... Oh, for fuck's sake, I thought we'd actually get to beat the Orox. That would have been fun. So, everybody on our team got injured. Oh, and this is the other thing I meant to point out. Um, 
It doesn't appear to be possible for Riku, Yuna, or Shinra, although I might be wrong, and they just have a really exceptionally high number of games in their contract. But Brother, Buddy, and um, Shinra, I have had to renew their contracts for all of them. It's very cheap. But yeah, all of them attempt to leave the team periodically. <laughs> So that's I think that's what con what CNT means. I've wondered about that. If it's the same for Yuna Payne and yeah. So each of them has about 29 games before they become free agents. So the Gull Wings can leave the Gull Wings. Anyway, uh Payne is out for two games, Rin is out for two games. I'm not going to go with that. I'm going to load. But uh I just thought that was kind of fun and uh, that you guys might enjoy seeing them get laid the fuck out by the Mercedes Rocks. <laughs> Uh, no, my main thing is, again, just in case you somehow actually get a cinematic for unlocking the Aurochs, I want it to, to be recording, and it turns out you don't. One more disappointment from the uh, Blitzball minigame. Anyway, folks, on the Serious JG, I want to thank you guys very much for watching, and I hope you'll join me next time for more of Let's Play Final Fantasy X-2. Um, so I have to decide if I... Now that I've unlocked the Aurochs... Oh, you know what I, I can do real quick? Now that we've unlocked the Aurochs, I should see... You get Play the Besaid Aurochs as second place? Is it... This doesn't make sense. We've already... Um... This doesn't make any sense to me. We already unlocked that. Well, I guess uh, I'm not quite done off screening this yet then because I need to play a few exhibition games and try to maybe even play through a, a league just to see um, what other prizes can be unlocked um, because yeah that's actually a, a thing one of the rewards for this is uh, unlocking an accessory that helps uh, increase your AP point growth by equipping it, and the only uh, I don't think I ever got that before because I can then you can grow that stuff without it. But um, I'm kind of curious as to um, kind of curious as to what you have to do to unlo to get that because as long as I'm actually doing this, I might as well get that reward before I go around maxing out all of the dress spheres without it, you know what I mean? Alright, anyway, um, I'm just blathering now, so thank you guys who commented about whether you wanted to see more um, Blitzball on this, and I'm sorry I basically ignored you. <laughs> but you know, I, I, I give myself credit for the fact that I'm, I'm open, uh, I admit when a vid video is Blitzball in the video description, so you know that you don't have to watch them. Alright,